I'm John Rudy, and I'm from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and I build a lot of buildings in 1930s style. So Art Deco, would that, is that it, or a lot of different styles from that time period? So I try to build stuff that would exist in the 1930s, but not necessarily be built in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. So everything from Art Deco and Streamline Modern, uh, back through um, Beaux-Arts, and b buildings that have been modified okay. to have uh, Art Deco storefronts mm -hmm. added on to older buildings, mm -hmm. stuff from the late 19th century as well. Okay. So. so start with this green building. Uh, what are we looking at here? So this is a, a classic streamlined modern building, um, classic art deco, the type of stuff that you see in downtown Los Angeles, kind of the, the high tech, highest uh, top of the line, 1920s, 1930s structures. And actually that building, um, I, I tend to build based off of one or two pieces mm -hmm. that kind of fall into place and then uh, the rest of the structure falls around it. Mm -hmm. So on this one, it's actually the, the curves, the arches here. And the arches uh, weren't available in quantity for a long time, and then all of a sudden I started buying the, the Toy Story Army Builder yeah. sets. Oh, that was a great set for green parts. Exactly. Yeah. Great set for green parts, and that's what dictated the color of the building, but also allowed me to do the, the really, really uh, great cornice work there. And I'm, I'm really proud of that building. I, all of my buildings tend to get rebuilt, mm -hmm. um, taken down and rebuilt. This one just went through a rebuild, and I actually squatted the, um, sh shortened each of the floors okay. uh, to, get, to make it look taller without adding actual height to it. The Disneyland effect, right? Yes, the Dis that effect? Yeah, yeah, the Disneyland effect. So mm -hmm. I try to build in a scale that's slightly smaller above the first floor mm -hmm. than minifig scale mm -hmm. so that it looks like it's taller even when it's not. Yes. So my floors tend to be about five bricks tall, okay. uh, whereas most people build, you know, seven, eight, nine, so they can fit interiors. I don't do interiors. Sure. It's so Now, now it's is, this, is this the ground floor of the building we're looking at here? Or yes, is it this? is. And, and you'll notice that it doesn't have a front door. So, sure. So, not, so not a big deal. Shot of the lack of front door. That's yes. cool. Yeah. Um, no, I, some of this stuff is uh, is almost finished. Uh, I was hoping to get it done, and you know, you run out of time when you're of building course. for the fest. Of course. Um, so I was I was hoping to get this done, and next year I'm hoping to have a, a whole street scene to go along with this as well, awesome. with palm trees and and a giant hotel at the end. So we'll awesome. see. Awesome. You guys can videotape that next year. Hopefully. Of course. And then moving along here, it looks like we have a lovely uh, dark blue and brown building here. I have no imagination um, when it comes to naming each of these structures. So this is my brown movie house. Oh. Um, it's a brown. I, I even threw an RKO there just so it had a movie theme, but this. This one, it was it was those columns. It was those those round mm -hmm. one by one columns, mm -hmm. and then I really wanted to play with the, with the idea of making a large pane of glass, mm -hmm. the the large the large glass of an old opera house sure. above the marquee. Mm -hmm. So really, what I was going for here is a, is an older style building that's been retrofitted. Mm -hmm. The bottom has kind of a, a vitrolite feel to it with the with the curve of the deco period, and then the top has what was the old opera house before it was converted in over to movies. Sure. So each of these, uh, a building can tell you a story just by how it's constructed. And then once again, you're using some lovely uh, one by two transparent uh, plates? That's what I use for all of my windows, and it was actually inspired by Miniland. Mm -hmm. So the Miniland windows, um, they cheat, yeah. and they cut out pieces of like that, that plexiglass you use in, uh, yes. in overhead lighting, yes. and then they glue it on, on the inside of the windows. Mm -hmm. And I don't like cheating, so I'm, I'm a purist, uh -huh. but um, but I wanted the same look. I want that kind of frosted glass look. Reducing and stacking, the opacity, yeah. Thank God for, lug, uh, yeah. for, for um, uh, the wall. Oh, God, for, yeah. For the pick-a-brick wall, because um, stacking up those those plates gives you that kind of frosted glass yeah. look. It's great. And you were able to get, what, I mean, cups and cups. The Lego stores had those, so they're on the wall for quite some time. And, and they come on and off the yeah, wall, and, um, off. And, and I have bins and bins of them, because oh, I'm yeah. always afraid they're never going to be available <laughs> yeah, again. Yeah. Definitely. And then moving along? Something I noticed here is you did build maybe almost a little bit of an interior on this building on the bottom there. So right. not quite a full... Pop, popping in a little bit, um, getting a little bit of the tile work that you'd see underneath a marquee, uh, kind of that area where you where you buy the tickets. But I'm only kind of building into the the front windows to the front door and, and no real further than that. Totally. Um, I like to use my brick on the outside because I'm an architecture person. So I don't really need the lunch counter inside. And then moving along here, did Mark Stafford kill Teal? Uh, Mark Stafford did kill Teal, but um, long live Teal. Yes. So I was able to get some Teal off of BrickLink uh, when I was making another order. They had a lot in one shop, and it was relatively cheap. So I went, okay, cool. I, I actually dumped it into LDD and said, uh, while I was waiting for the order to come, and said, okay, what can I do with this Teal that I just ordered? <laughs> and lo and behold, popped out this, uh, this hamburger stand. Um, so it's a it's an older bu building that's been retrofitted. This is actually White Tower Hamburger, 
Okay. Um, kind of like White Castle. They were huh? using the term white yeah. uh, at the early 20th century because it denoted clean. Uh, it, like a, like nurses. They actually dressed yeah. up like nurses to yeah. serve the hamburgers. Isn't that the old adage of the, why the Victorians' uh, wedding dresses are white because of purity, yeah, cleanliness, it, 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 all that kind of... We've always seen white yeah. as pure. Yeah. So their colors were white and then this brilliant turquoise. Sure. And I went, okay, Mark's not going to get the best of me. And I built the bottom of this in LDD, but then I needed a building to go along with it. And I love putting the olive with the teal. Yes. So you've got the new color with the old color, yes. and they really pop against one Oldest another. Oldest beautiful color, newest beautiful color, yeah, something to exactly. that effect. And so then for those of them, uh, for those of you, the, the, I'm just going to stumble from my words a little bit more. For those of our viewers who are listening and wondering what in the world Mark Stafford killed teal is all about, would you like to give a little bit of a rundown? So teal was an amazing color um, that, was, uh, that was used very rarely, but for some really cool detail elements, particularly in the Technic theme, yes. um, but also some of the system as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mark Stafford, when I, I think, believe he was working on Exoforce, and he had the choice of either making a, a model in um, teal or in purple. Mm -hmm. And whichever color he didn't choose <laughs> would go out of production. Is this is this is legend there? This, this is a this legend? Is, this this is, is legend that he has confirmed oh on my. Flickr. So, yeah, so he chose to make the model purple. And, yeah, I know, you're shocked. What? Shocked! That's, uh, that gambling is going uh, that's on That's ridiculous. Um, so he got rid of the uh, the teal by choosing to make the model purple. Well, I will always hold that against Mark, but he's a wonderful person yeah. who killed teal. Because we all know that purple would have come back in the friends line anyway, so he probably exactly. could have just kept teal. He he did give us. I, I think he gave us medium azure though. With, well, with the uh, okay, with the, Mark, we'll keep you around. Yeah, fine, okay. fine. Which is close enough. Moving along here, we have a lovely tan and gray or light bluish gray building. This building, um, this is really inspired by my need to have a hard boiled detective in my world. Okay. And before the detective's office existed, I needed some place for him to to have an office. And it it actually most of my architecture is inspired by Disney architecture, mm -hmm. and in uh, what used to be MGM Studios now is Disney Hollywood Studios. One of the buildings looks very similar to this, and it has Eddie Valiant's office in it from Who Framed Roger <laughs> Rabbit in the window. And so I wanted to build that aesthetic, and so that in my brain I could say, okay, I've got Eddie Valiant on my street. And so I was building to a, a five and dime, a typical kind of Woolworths, McCrory's uh, aesthetic but also trying to keep that, that corrugation at the top. So it has that, that rough metal feel. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. This one, again, all of my buildings tend to get rebuilt like 17 million sure, times. Sure. This one just went through a rebuild like two weeks ago <laughs> to make it a little bit more robust. And, and I'm really happy with the fact that I can now carry it without it falling to pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that uh, work at the top is actually half step offset with jumpers mm -hmm. held in by just a few studs sure. and um, it, it's a really fiddly but it gets a it's a really sharp look sure and, and then what was the nucleus of the build did it start around this kind of marquee it sort? actually it actually started around the cornice okay um, it started around the, the cornice work and that and those grill uh, those uh, I'm sorry profile bricks sure. up there um, and then kind of the, the stepping of the front of it mm -hmm. backwards is, is really where that one started. Definitely. And, and great use of the Lego, uh, I believe those are collectible minifigure keychain. Kinda. Yeah, those are from the key, the old keychains, okay. uh, just ripping those off because yeah. they they're, they're, they're valid. Yeah. yeah, That's not cheating. Of course. Um, I can take apart the keychains if I want. I own them. Of awesome. Yeah, of course you can. <laughs> and then uh, coming along yet again, we have a lovely uh, sand green building. Yes, and this is the sand green arms. because Once again, again a creative name. A creative name. Um, so that this is supposed to be one of those typical apartment buildings or um, or Chicago. large hotels that you see in Chicago style yeah. the Chicago School of Architecture um, this this is a, a Burnham style building yes, Daniel Burnham. Um, and uh, and it's really a, a fun a fun kind of fiddly yeah. fiddly uh, building style to play in and this really was driven by you'll notice all of the uh, all of the the great little people yes <laughs> um, and little gray uh, the, those would be what game figures yeah those are the game figures and I was able to get a, a bunch of those um, through a through a special order mm -hmm. and uh, and actually kind of build this around them from the top up and then I was also able to get the masonry bricks at the bottom so I love the masonry brick but it's really interestingly designed that it doesn't tessellate properly. Yeah. So you have to stack them in those long columns, which means that it has to have this interesting bracing going on inside. Yeah. 
Well, very nice. I love the, the little inset, you know, kind of... That actually was done in this t style of building because of fire code. Fire code. So that's so that every apartment or every room has an exterior window to jump out, yeah. to run, in case the building is burning yeah. down. Um, so you see um, dumbbell-shaped buildings, particularly in New York, New York City, um, that dumbbell-shaped buildings and T-shaped buildings and I-shaped buildings mm -hmm. were all popping up. Or buildings popping the interior up. courtyard or Exactly. That effect, and, yeah. and sometimes that interior courtyard actually didn't have an, a a an access to the exterior <laughs> yeah, yeah. either. So what's so, the point? Yeah. So you'd be just as screwed there. <laughs> no, the effort's what counts. Yes, the effort's what counts. And then moving along? So this is my medium blue office tower. A creative name once again. Yeah. But I'm really happy with this. I wanted to go for that ribbed look mm -hmm. that you get sometimes with the with the deco buildings. And the color really pops on this too. Sure. You see a lot of uh, tile work, particularly in California, that's this great medium blue color. And I really wanted to take advantage of that. And those, those ribs running up are all um, basically standing on their own accord. Yeah. Um, it's tough to get the bracing because uh, the way that medium blue was was molded, sometimes it has this variation in the color. And I like to I like to keep, especially with, with deco style, with Streamline Modern, it's, it's, it's a lot about continuity yeah. of color. It's about large spaces of one color. And so I used all the same dial hot of bricks, uh. um, which means that I can't have that much internal bracing going on. And so, how did you use all the same dial hot of bricks, if you could enlighten us? I bought them all at the same time. Oh, uh, it's, okay. it's, it's key. So they all came out of the same canine. They all they came out on the wall at the same exact time. Okay. And that, that actually helps to kind of keep the color consistent. If you buy a bunch of brick at one time, it typically will look the same. Yeah. Definitely uh, a truth. There is a subtle variation in every uh, Lego color out there. Yes. And some people might recognize, is that part of an Indiana Jones set there in yes. the front? Just yeah, yeah. yeah I, I want to I throw a, a couple vehicles in front of these. So I've got some of my stock vehicles here. Um, but also I've got you know a couple from, from sets and that kind of stuff. Just to give a scale. So, yeah. so when you're looking at this from a little bit of a distance, you see that we are in minifig scale. Yeah. We, we are kind of building to that weirdly misproportioned shape. Of course. And that's one of the few Lego, I guess, official sets from that period, or that's supposed to be in that period? Yeah, we have very little from that period, but thankfully Indiana Jones, Jones. is smack yeah. dab in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I have no Nazis in my city, but I do have Indy. Certainly, certainly. And then something I'm seeing on the side of the San Green building is that you're kind of uh, like real, real buildings. You sort of change the color of the side of the building from the facade. Yes. So most Lego builders don't do that, yes, and you so do. So the facade is the forward facing, the stuff that the public sees. You don't worry about painting the side of a building. You don't worry about making it out of the expensive material from the front. So I use a lot of dark red, a lot of browns, a lot of dark grays in the back of the buildings to show that, you know, the builders are not worried about that section. That's the kind of the support structure yeah. and then the facade is really where all the color all the vibrancy comes from totally awesome awesome and then moving along here we have a lovely dark red building and yes. once again a creative name yes this is the dark red pontiac dealer ah, that's creative okay um, so this actually started out as two buildings the pontiac dealership was born out of the sign um, i saw a, a a great neon sign on Flickr for a pontiac dealership uh -huh and wanted to recreate it. And it took a, a heck of a lot of weird snot work mm -hmm. to get that working. And it's pinned together in a couple different interesting ways inside. It uses the Technic brick with the half pin uh, because this was before the one by one with the stud on the side existed. Uh, okay. Um, so it's, so it's using- flush geometry. Exactly. Yep. So it's using some interesting, interesting geometry, some interesting mathematics to get it done. But I needed a building to go with it. And the original building was only two stories tall. And you put that next to all this stuff and it looks kind of weird. Yeah. So I actually built, a, I was building a second building that had this cornice on it. And I realized that I could mate the two. So it's a Pontiac dealership with the kind of 30s-ish sign mm -hmm. that's been put into a storefront that existed before. Sure. So it has this this kind of classical style, yeah. um, the neoclassical style at the top there. Awesome, awesome. And then to finish us out here, I see a lovely curved window. Yes. Um, that, that's where this starts. <laughs> yeah. That's where this starts and ends. Use the curve. Um, this little this little building, I love vitrolite. Uh -huh. Vitrolite was a it was a, a marble replacement that was uh, created by I think it was Owens Corning mm -hmm. uh, in the 1920s. Sounds and, right. Um, well, it wasn't created in the 1920s, but it popularized in the 20s, and it becomes this amazing kind of shiny front to a building, almost and, like ABS plastic. Almost like ABS plastic, yeah. but 
it was curved. It was it was set in at at odd angles because it's glass. Yeah. It can be it can be bent and shaped as it's still hot. Yeah. And you see a ton of these types of storefronts in small towns across America, oh, yeah. where it's an older building that got this this facelift. Yeah. And I wanted to give a building a facelift, and that curved window just screams vitrolite. Especially the fact that it mates with the other curves in the system. Totally. So I can do the black of the vitrolite with the glass, and then use the my one of my favorite elements, the ranger hats there at the top to give the older style of cornice. You are a ranger after all? Yes. And something I noticed on the side here is there like a little uh, kind of mosaic built into the side there of the building? Yes, so that has traveled with a ton of different buildings. Um, that's one of the, the first things I built when I started building architecture. I had a small like two-story building, just a streetscape, and I built cola into the side, um, <laughs> mainly because I couldn't fit Coca-Cola. But then I realized, okay, it's kind of cool that it's just cola. cola. That exact build has kind of moved from building to building. So that, that advertisement, just like you'd see painted on the side of a brick wall across America, any place, um, has traveled from building to building. And now, right now, it's in, in my vitrolite storefront. It'll probably stay there, and I'll probably put a few more of them in. I want to do a wink. Um, which is this interesting kind of lemon, lemon lime. Lemon soda, yes, yeah, it yes. Was a lemon lime Very soda. Very popular in certain uh, parts of the country. Exactly, yeah, yeah. and it, there's tons of them. I grew up in upstate New York, and uh -huh. there's tons of those ads painted on the side of buildings. But I can't figure out how to put Wink in there in the right font. Yeah. So I'm still playing with those. But it's really great to put those types of details in the sides of buildings. Adds life to it. Yeah, it adds yeah. life to it, and, and more importantly, so if I put this building in the block, you don't see it. Mm -hmm. But if it ends up, when I'm setting up the streetscape, that it ends up on the end of the block, suddenly it has this, it has this new life to it. And if you include that in all the buildings, then no matter how you set them up, something's going to pop on the side. So most of these buildings, even though you can't see them because they're up against one another, have windows on the side walls. They have have entrances and things like that yeah. on the side, so that if they end up on an alley, they end up on the end of a block. It doesn't look weird. It, it doesn't, yeah, yeah, it doesn't just dead. look like a, a wall of brick. Yep. Yeah, and then you can also save on brick if you put in enough windows, right? Yes, um, and that's that's how I'm economizing my dark red. Um, so putting in enough windows, like you see on the front of the Pontiac dealership, is just uh, it. It means I have to use less. Awesome, awesome. So if someone's watching this video and they see all of your buildings and they kind of want to maybe go out and start making some mm -hmm. of their own, are there any places you would suggest for people to go to kind of find reference materials? Maybe looking in their own city for buildings. That's really where most of my reference comes from. Is I actually look at the buildings that are around me, and I think in Lego. Mm -hmm. which is really painful at times oh God. because you you see a cornice and you go how would I build that and then your brain goes off into it into left field yeah. and you're stuck standing there for 10 minutes going how would there's no elements for that how would there's no elements oh wait and then you remember something that's in the back catalog starting from that and then also just playing with pieces uh -huh. building table scraps I have table scraps that I've never done anything with that someday will be a building yeah but one of the things that I love about building in this scale, in this style, is that I try to vary the widths and vary the geometries. So you'll see a lot of my buildings are odd widths. Yep. They're weird shapes. They're not the 32 base plate. Yep. They're not the 48 base plate. They're not the 16 base plate. You're not marrying yourself to concrete standards. Right. And that's a really, really great way to approach this, is instead of saying, I am going to build Cafe Corner, go, I am going to let the parts tell me what they want yeah. to be. Let the ingredients tell you what to cook. Yeah, or uh, Michelangelo, I think, used to say that he does not sculpt the marble. The marble, he just releases from the marble what is intended to be there. And that sounds really, really pretentious, and I, <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. but... but You, you went know, there, and it was necessary. Yeah, th these... The, the brick can can say different things. And when you have a streetscape that's all 32 base plates wide, it starts to look weird and formulaic. Here, you can start to see that the world is not perfect. Mm -hmm. It's different widths. It, you know, this lot may have been two lots at some point and somebody had to build something on both of them. Yep.